We are back with Star Ocean, and we're gonna head to the bridge and see if we need to do something else. And to the bridge. How'd it go? I believe we'll have our answers soon enough. That's wonderful. Then come to the bridge ASAP. All right. <sighs> the two of them get along with each other way too well. That was quick. Connect me to Dr. Krupp. How's it coming along, Doctor? It's done. That's how it's coming, slow look. Already? You never cease to amaze, Doctor. Well, let's cut to the chase. You'll need to both reprogram some aspects of the software and physically apply symbols to the outside of the Gravitic Warp Engine. Imbue the Warp Engine with symbols? I would never have thought of that. It's possible. And I can rewrite the software from here. But the symbols are the real problem. Sadly for you, I'm not a symbol metrics expert. I know a thing about how to imbue objects with symbols. Dr. Krupp. Can you show me a list of the symbols we need? This is the symbological formula, a copy of which I've sent to your engine room's terminal. It looks pretty intricate, but I should be okay. What? Are you kidding me? They're the same as signets in principle, so, anyway, I've never done such long and complex ones before, but I'll give it all I've got. Excellent. Say, what was your name again? Fiore. Fiore Brunelli. I'll have to remember that. Very well, let me start rewriting the program. If you can faithfully reproduce the formula I sent, we shouldn't have any problems. Got it. You that engine good. Leave it to me. Um, uh, Fiore? Would you mind if I tagged along and watched you imbue the engine? I've never seen anyone imbue an object before, so I can't help but be curious. I suppose it's only natural for a signaturge to be interested in this kind of thing. Mind if she comes too, Anne? Of course, no objections here. <gasps> yes! You should come with me and see it for yourself, Fidel. You weren't around when I got mine imbued, so I bet you've never seen it performed before, right? What? Uh, I don't know. It can't hurt to acquire some new knowledge. I don't see why you would refuse. She speaks the truth. There's never a reason to turn down a request from a lady. Captain! Okay. <sighs> Follow me to the engine room. Deck three, engine room. This must be the symbological formula he sent. Luckily, I just started researching compound signets and the combinations of base signets that form them. I've tried many different sequences before, but I've never seen anything near this complex. That's stark evidence of how great Cronus's strides in symbological technology have been. And those strides are what led to the creation of Relia and various signets? Hmm. This is the engine room. The Gravitic Warp Engine's core should be right up ahead. You 
would be dangerous for you to get any closer, so could you please stand back? All right, then. This is it. Okay, Fiore. I'll bring up the symbological formula on this terminal, and you can do the actual imbuing. If you want to view the formula from a different angle, or have any questions at all, please let me know. Thanks. You know, I don't think I'll ever get over feeling nervous when I have to imbue someone else's stuff. Alright, let's get to it. what imbuing looks like. And that was our final symbol. <sighs> Thank goodness. It's all over. Congratulations on a job well done, Fiore. Are you okay? I am tired, but I do want to see the results of all this. I suppose we should make our way to the bridge now. Updated the software. Now our fate is squarely in the hands of Lady Luck. I thought you might like to know, Captain, that I've never done this without running months of tests first. If this ends in failure, I'll apologize to you all in heaven. I highly doubt that'll be necessary. I'll cut the power to the engine if I see any abnormalities. I see. Shut down regular warp engines. Yes, sir. Shutting down regular warp engines. First, we need to see if it can even start. Now, engage Gravitic Warp Engine. Aye, aye, sir. Engaging the Gravitic Warp Engine. What's going on? Come okay. on. The Gravitic Engine's up and running. Warp 1. All systems normal, and gravitic wave values within predicted limits. First try increasing the speed to warp 5. Warp 5. Yes, sir. Warp 2. 3. 4. And warp 5. There don't seem to be any problems yet. Now it's time for the real test. My calculations say we can safely accelerate to warp 15. Just do it carefully. You heard him. Accelerate to warp 15. Uh... Yes, sir. Typer speed. Six. Typer speed. Seven. Eight. Nine. We're now at warp 10, sir. Keep accelerating. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Good so far. Careful. This is the moment of truth. 14.2, 14 14.4, 14.6, 14.8. Warp 15, sir. All systems appear to be normal. Did it turn out okay? Yes. At least it would seem that way. What a feat! It is, isn't it? Yes, oh, we wow. totally did. It's ridiculous. It's a success, Captain. How magnificent to think that a Buing made this possible. Congratulations, Captain Kenny. The spacecraft is now officially the fastest in the Federation. We're the best. <gasps> Spectacular. Nice. We owe you a huge debt of gratitude, Doctor. No, Fiore is the one you should be thanking, not me. You're truly something special. What do you say to coming to work for me once this thing is over and done with? Thank you. I'll think about it. Of 
According to my readings, there should be no issue with maintaining this speed. It could theoretically go up to 16, but there's not enough data yet to back that claim up. Stay cruising at 15 until we have some more. This should be plenty fast anyway. Keep sending me flight data as you receive. Also, stay vigilant and remember, return to normal space the moment any aberrations occur. Will do. Thanks again for your help, Doctor. Troop, over and out. Maintain warp 15. We're going after that chrono ship. Yes, sir. Now plotting our course. At this speed, it shouldn't take long to catch up with them. I doubt they'll take kindly to our presence either. In the event they engage us right after emerging from subspace, get some rest while you can. Sounds good. Red alert, all hands to battle stations. Vacredians, come to the bridge immediately. I repeat, we're on red alert, all hands to battle stations. <laughs> 16 minutes until contact. Set shields to Omni and phase cannons to automatic aiming. Whatever you do, don't let any shots hit their engine room. Aye, aye, sir. Setting shields to Omni, putting phase cannons on automatic aiming. Other enemy ships? Our short-range radar detects only the one. It doesn't seem to have rendezvous with any fleet yet. There's also nothing resembling a base in the area, but there is an asteroid belt. Captain, the enemy has slowed down. Only minutes until contact. Reduce our speed as well. But I don't want to go any slower than double the enemies. Sir! They've warped out and are flying a holding pattern in normal space! Emergency warp out. Enter normal space. Aye, aye, sir. Currently at warp 10, 9, 8. High energy emission from enemy ship. Now 0 0.173 light years away. Hurry, they're gaining the upper hand as we speak. Two, one. Now in normal space. Engines to half. Evade via course 140. Divert power from gravitic warp engines as shields. Reducing engines to half. Setting course 140. Diverting power from gravitic warp engine to shields. Four incoming torpedoes currently 30,000 clicks out. It's possible to avoid two of them, but we're assured of taking hits from the remaining two. We'll weather this volley easily enough. Our state-of-the-art shields and output from the gravitic warp engine will keep us safe. All hands prepare for impact! Shield efficiency reduced to 78%, but that figure is rapidly climbing. No problems here. Engines to three quarters. Launch four photon torpedoes on course 90 Mark 90 at 100,000 clicks. Yes, sir. 30 seconds to current destination. After that, set engines to full power and take the enemy from behind. Fire phase cannons once we have visual contact, but don't aim for their engines. Aye, aye. Aye, aye, sir. Destination reached. Firing four photon torpedoes. Enemy taking evasive action. Torpedo 70,000 clicks out. Engines at full speed. Fire all phase cannons at the enemy's projected position. Firing phase cannons. The phase cannons all hit the enemy ship, but they seem to have had no effect. So, their shields aren't half bad either. Fire the last four photon torpedoes. Copy that. Firing. They managed to evade the first four torpedoes. The next four at 5,000 clicks. Three made contact with the enemy shields. And? Their shields are in perfect condition. Their speed remains constant. Damn it. It's our newest ship and we're barely treading water. They have quite the shields, don't they? Captain, 
Now that we can run the Gravitic Warp Engine for extended periods of time, it should be possible to use that energy to launch quantum torpedoes. This ship is equipped with 12 of them for testing purposes. You're right. That last attack should lead the enemy to underestimate our firepower. Hiding quantum torpedoes amidst a barrage of photon ones should also increase the likelihood they'll hit. That's my ad for you. Load four photon and quantum torpedoes apiece. Don't forget to set it so they do not target the engine room. Aye, aye, sir. Preparing four photon and quantum torpedoes for launch. The enemy vessel's changing course. Their new course indicates they'll attack, not evade. They think they can take down our shields with a volley of plain old torpedoes. There's no doubt they're not the best of this. Fire two photon torpedoes, then fire two quantum ones. Yes, sir. Firing two photon torpedoes. Now firing two quantum ones. Captain, sensors read the enemy has launched eight torpedoes of their own. Take evasive action. Yes, sir. Talk about a bold move. That proves it. They don't think anything of our artillery. Photon torpedoes, 5,000 clicks out. Quantum torpedoes, 8,000 clicks out. Enemy torpedoes incoming at 20,000 clicks. The enemy's making no attempt to evade. Photon torpedo contact imminent. Their shields sustained no damage. Still no sign of evasion from them. Quantum torpedo contact imminent. Captain, their shields have been reduced to 11%. We've also confirmed, their engines are no longer operational. Yes. And their torpedoes? We succeeded in avoiding all eight of them. What a thrashing. Hold that thought. The enemy ship has lost power and is now caught in a nearby planetoid's gravitational field. What was that? Uh-oh. If that ship goes down, Little Miss Starlight goes down with it. Engines at half speed. Pull to within ten clicks of the enemy. Ten clicks, sir? There's nothing their ship can do to us. It's lost all power and gone utterly silent. Understood. Engines to half speed. We're currently ten thousand clicks out, gradually slowing down. And, once we get within ten clicks, halt its descent with our tractor beams. Will do. Currently one thousand. Five hundred. One hundred. Ten clicks away, sir. Secure the ship with tractor beams. Activating tractor beams. Their ship's trajectory has stabilized. I want to talk to their captain. Open a comm link for me. Yes, sir. Sir, there's no response from them. Is it that they can't respond? Or that they simply don't want to? We'll have to board them and settle this face to face. Prepare the transporter. And don't forget to investigate the ship's layout. Yes, sir. All right, everyone. To the transport room. Delacroix, what's the situation inside their ship? It's lost almost all its power, including the default generator. All that's left is a small reserve, which is connected to the life support system. Then let's hurry. Alright, and folks, I'm going to end it here, and I will continue here very shortly. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please leave a comment, or like, favorite, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode of Star Ocean.